Hello, I'm Tom Anahumi from Dell EMC. In this demonstration video, I'll be showing the Dell EMC Virtual Storage Integrator for the VMware vSphere client 8.6 new features and how it can help VMware and storage administrators manage their parse store clusters. So first of all, what is VSI? Dell EMC Virtual Storage Integrator is a plugin that extends the VMware vSphere client allowing users of the vSphere client to perform Dell EMC storage management tasks within the same tool they use to manage their virtual VMware environments. VSI enables administrator to view, manage, and optimize their storage directly from the vSphere client. In version 8.6, we've added the following features. VSI management interface and initial setup wizard, an initial setup wizard to register VSI with a standalone or enhanced Clint Mode Group vCenters. Also, a new management interface which manages VSI vCenters, certificate, and plugin settings outside of the context of the vCenter. We've also updated the VMware plugins from local to remote architecture. Host connectivity. This feature is relevant to all the storage platforms. We've added host connectivity views to understand if the host is registered with the desired storage platform and also added the ability to register ESXi hosts directly from the vSphere web client. While the VSI plugin supports all the Dell EMC storage products, in this demo, we will be focusing on the new Power Store features, appliance selection, clone, refresh, and restore operations, and host connectivity. With that, let's start by installing the plugin. The new version of VSI can be downloaded from the Dell support site as an OVA file. From the vSphere client, I'm right-clicking on my cluster and selecting Deploy OVF. I'm providing the file I downloaded and click Next. Here, I'm providing a name to the VM. Next, I'm selecting the compute resource accepting the license agreement, selecting the data store and the network, and then clicking Next. Here, we need to provide the network details, the default gateway, DNS server, the IP address and the subnet mask of the VSI plugin, as well as the NTP details. Then, we need to check the box to enable SSH access to the VM and acknowledge the message. Now, I'm fast forwarding the video up to the point where the VSI is up and running. After the plugin is deployed, I navigating to the IP or host name of the VSI virtual machine and going through the initial setup wizard. This wizard page is optional. If the user would like to register vCenter without SSL, he can just click the next button. If the user decides they would like to use SSL, they can import the certificate using the import button and then click the enable SSL button to register using the SSL connection. Next, we need to type in the vCenter administrator, username, password, and then confirm the password. We can type in standalone or enhanced link mode vCenter in the common separated list. Next, we can review the vCenter and certificate information in the summary table. Then, we click Finish to register VSI with the vCenter. After registration success, we can click on the link to go back to the vCenter or click Cancel button to be redirected to the VSI management interface. At this stage, we are ready to register our ParStore cluster. From the vSphere web client, I'm clicking on the VSI icon and then on the plus sign to add a new storage array. From the drop down menu, I'm selecting Power Store and specifying the IP address or host name, the username, and password. As you can see, for the purpose of this demo, I'm using a newly installed Power Store array. Here, we can enable SSL and import the Power Store certificate. Next, we can provide access to the vSphere users and groups to manage the ParStore array from the VSI plugin. Next, we can register the VASA provider automatically 
in order to be able to create virtual volumes and connect them to our vSphere environment. The host screen is one of the new features we've added in this version. This feature allows us to register our ESXi hosts directly from the VSI plugin as hosts in the PowerStore array, whether they are connected via FC or iSCSI. Next, I'm clicking Finish to add the PowerStore cluster. If we now go back to the PowerStore UI, we can see that all the ESXi hosts I selected have been added to PowerStore as new hosts, including their WWNs. By navigating to the vCenter storage providers, we can see that the new VASA provider has been registered successfully as well. Now, let's create a new data store. I'm navigating to the host and cluster tab and then right clicking on my cluster and I'm going to the Dell EMC VSI actions. From the drop down menu, I'm selecting new data store. When the wizard opens, I can choose between multiple data store types. VMFS, NFS, or VVOL data stores. When creating a VMFS data store, I can select the version and also to choose to create a single or multiple data stores. I'm clicking next here and I can give it a name. Next, I'm selecting my cluster. I can also see the capacity information for each array I manage via the plugin. On this screen, I'm specifying the capacity. In this case, I want it to be 2 terabyte. I can also select the performance policy and the protection policy. The appliance placement is a new feature we've added in VSI 8.6. This allows us to select a specific appliance in case we have more than one appliance managed under the same PowerStore cluster. Also, we can set the space reclamation policy to low or none. Now, I'm clicking on Next and Finish. Within a few seconds, a new volume is being created at the array level, mapped to the relevant hosts in the cluster, and formatted as VMFS 6. In order to demonstrate the new clone, refresh, and restore features, I'm cloning a new virtual machines to the data store I've just created using the VSI plugin. The first feature I would like to cover is creating a thin clone. A thin clone is a read-write copy of a volume. Thin clone use the same underlining pointer-based technology that snapshots use to create multiple copies of volume. When users create a thin clone, it acts as a regular resource and is listed with the other resources of the system. Like snapshots, users can create manage and destroy thin clones through PowerStore Manager, PowerStore CLI, REST API, and now using the VSI plugin. I'm right-clicking on a data store and choosing Create Thin Clone from the Dell EMC VSI menu. I'm selecting the host to mount the clone. This host will be rescanned to mount the new clone, and the clone data store will be named as a snap minus and a data store name. As you can see, a new thin clone has been created and mounted on the ES6 host as a data store. Now, I'm creating a new folder in the original data store and deleting the virtual machine. I'm navigating to the configure tab and then clicking on the Dell EMC VSI storage tab. From this screen, I can view general information about the data store, including capacity, performance, and protection information, and even change the settings such as these policies. Next, I'm going to refresh the original data store from the thin clone I've just created. For volumes and their thin clones, the refresh operation replaces the contents of an object with the data of another using the same family. I'm right-clicking on a data store and choosing Refresh Data Store from the Dell EMC VSI menu. I'm choosing the data store to refresh from, which is the thin clone I've just created. Also, I'm checking the Take a Backup Snapshot checkbox 
to create a snapshot on the target data store automatically so that I have another point in time. The data store will be re-signatured and the host will be rescanned to mount the refreshed volume. As you can see, the operation completed successfully and the data that I deleted from the original volume has been restored as part of the refresh operation. By navigating to the parse.ui UI and selecting the original data store, we can see the snapshot has been created as well. Just like the refresh from volume operation, now that we have a snapshot of a volume, we can refresh the data store using the snapshot. I'm going to the data store and clicking on configure, storage, and snapshot. Expanding the more actions on a snapshot and choosing refresh using snapshot. I'm choosing from all related data store as target and then I'm checking the take a backup snapshot to create snapshot on the target automatically. As part of this process, the data store will be re-signatured and the host will be rescanned to mount the refreshed volumes. By navigating to the parser UI and selecting the ThinkClone volume, we can see that the snapshot has been created as well. The last VSI feature I'm going to show you is restoring from a snapshot. A restore operation reverts a parent resource dataset to a previous point in time when a snapshot was taken. So first of all, let's delete the files from the original volume. Next, I'm going to the data store and navigating to configure, storage, and snapshots. I'm expanding the more actions on the snapshot and choosing restore data store from snapshot. Here, only the current data store can be restored. So this is the one that I'm selecting. I'm checking the take a backup snapshot to create snapshot on the target data store automatically. At this stage, the host will be rescanned to mount the restored volume. By navigating to the parser UI and selecting the original data store, we can see that another snapshot has been created as requested. If I'm going back to the data store, we can see that the data that I deleted from the original volume has been restored as part of the restore operation. In conclusion, using the Dell EMC VSI plugin for VM or vSphere along with ParseStore can help streamline common tasks administrator incur daily, all while easily managing settings and tasks straight from the vCenter web client. For more information, please visit delltechnologies.com. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.